The analysis and design verification of bridge structures is very often an iterative process. Not only is it sometimes a trial and error approach when optimising the design for reinforcement or determining the girder sizes, but also the structural form often evolves from the preliminary design stage right through to the final detailed design. Autodesk Structural Bridge Design software has been specifically developed to handle this form of iterative workflow as it integrates model building, analysis and design verification in a very flexible way. This 15 minute video describes a typical scenario for preliminary design showing several cycles of the iterative process within ASBD. The structure used in the example is a single two span reinforced concrete beam with each span having 21 meters between bearings. The analysis is performed as a simple line girder and the result from this are used to check the design verification. Based upon the results of the verification, changes to the beam are made to both reinforcement and structural form before recycling the process a number of times until satisfactory design is achieved. So we're going to begin by starting a new project from a predefined template. So we go to File New and we select an EU project. We're also going to change the analysis type to a line girder and we're going to change our structure type to bridge type to a rail type bridge. It's good practice to add uh, some titles so we're just going to make this title RC line girder workshop and we're going to put a subtitle in of rail bridge. Let's just tidy up these materials. There's more materials here than we need, so I'm just going to get rid of everything except for um, grade 40 concrete and standard reinforcement. So we've got two materials that's left. So we're now going to look at our design beams and we're going to define a new reinforced concrete beam. This is going to be 21 meters long. It's a uniform beam and we're going to define the cross section uh, using a rectangular parametric shape which is 3 meters by 2 meters deep before we leave here the uh, property is at grade 40 concrete and we make sure we specify the soffit line Next we move on to defining our reinforcement. So we're going to add some bars by reinforcing faces with exact spacing of 150 millimeters, diameter 32 millimeter bars. We click on the face, check the cover is 50 millimeters, uh, and click on OK. We do the same with the top face. So that's defined our reinforcing bars top and bottom. OK, so the next thing we want to do is to define our, structural, uh, define our structure. So this is a two span line girder, 21 meters each span. All the, the, uh, fix, the um, supports are correct. And we're going to divide it into 22 segments so that we've got an even number with one point at the center. Now we assign the beam that we define to our structure okay we select the beam apply it to each of the spans they're identical and that will calculate the gross section properties for us so we can, now we can move on to our uh, automated loading so we're going to create loading for rail loading um, using uh, low model 71 and SW0 and here we can see this has created se uh, negative moments, positive moments and shear forces by the influence line method. Dead load and superimposed dead lo uh, loading can also be created um, automatically as well. All we need to do now is transfer the moments and forces from the left hand span and 
there's some automatic mapping here. So all of the loads that we've created will go find their way to the correct tables. We don't need to worry about um, distribution factors uh, because it's a single line beam. So we, transfer, we click on transfer results and now we can see what these results look like in our design beam. So we have now have a number of tables and we can see the moments and shear forces represent the results from the analysis. So we now carry out an analysis for ultimate limit state, persistent and transient situations uh, for, let's say, positive bending moment. And we can see here that um, our applied moment is almost twice the resistance moment. And likewise with the negative moment, we need to put uh, either increase the section or put some more reinforcement. in. So I'm going to put another row of reinforcement in both top and bottom. So just add some more reinforcement. Reinforcing faces again with bars at exactly 150 millimeter centers. So instead of the cover being 50 now, we set it to 140 from the face. Likewise, the same at the top. And now we can see we're very much closer um, with our resistance. In fact, for the positive moments, we've got uh, slightly more resistance than we re really need. So I'm now going to modify um, the, uh, the section by defining a hollow section in the center part of the beam. So the beam is no longer a uniform beam. It's varying because we're going to have two different sections um, along the span of the beam. Section one is just a solid section. Section two, we're going to modify by defining a second rectangular parametric shape. This one is going to be two meters wide by one meter 400 deep. Okay, we notice that um, the, the, at the moment it's concrete and so we will change that to being a void because that's going to be a hole. And then to move them into the correct location, I'm going to set the reference point to zero, which is a center. And then I make both of the Y and Z coordinates of each component the same, which will make them concentric. Don't forget to specify the soffit. Okay. So now I've defined this additional section, I now need to apply where that is going to say where that's going to be applied um, along the span. So section one, the solid one, is going to go from naught to one. The hollow section, section two, is going to go from one meter to twenty-one meters. Sorry, to twenty meters. Um, then I'm going to have section one will also go. Yes, that's section one um, will also go from twenty meters to twenty-one meters. So, if we were just change the transparency of the graphics now, um, we should be able to see um, that hollow section in the middle and how, how the reinforcement is in the top and bottom flange. I'm also going to change the soffit from being straight to curved. So I'm going to add in some additional soffit face points. I'm going to put one at 1 meters, one at the center at 10.5 meters, one at 20 meters, and one at the end of the beam. The center one I'm going to raise up by 500 millimeters and I'm going to make the soffit profile an arc. So you can see here we've got this circular arc between the, uh, the one meter points. You'll also notice that the reinforcement is sticking out to the beam so we need to go back to our reinforcement definition to adjust the attributes of the bottom bars. So just click on the attributes button for those bars and we change the bar shape. And we change that from horizontal to horizontal to parallel to soffit. 
and now we can see that the bars now follow the line of the soffit and are in the concrete. So before we go any further we just need to reanalyze our structure because the weights and the, the, the structure weight and the stiffness has changed slightly. No need to change any of the data, we just need to analyze both sets and transfer the results. That table is already defined for us. So transferring the results will now update those values within the uh, beam tables. So we now need to just verify um, whether the applied moments uh, are greater than the resistance moments. Now for our positive moments it's looking pretty good. Our negative moments we're still slightly slightly over there. So I'm going to put some additional bars in to about one meter um, or two meters from the end. Um, so just click on the elevation to get us back to the reinforcement tables. I'm going to add in some 25 millimeter bars, again reinforcing faces, the top face, and changing the covers to 40 millimeters. Will give me that additional row of bars. Now at the moment they're currently all the way along um, and we certainly don't need them there so I'm going to curtail those by clicking on the attributes for those bars and modifying the location along the beam so that it starts at 19 meters and goes to 21 meters. So we've got just a two meter length of bar. Now we can see that the resistance moment is stepped at that particular location um, and we're going to now make some additional adjustments uh, to optimize the reinforcement. So I'm going to curtail the second row of reinforcement in exactly the same way. And this is going to go from 14 to 21 meters. Okay, so we, we could just have a look at what that's like. Do we need, need to do any more to the top reinforcement? And I think we can actually reduce the reinforcement uh, in this area. So we want to curtail them at about that location. Um, so I'm going to, I want some bars to, to continue right the way through to the end. So I'm going to select uh, every other bar by holding down the control key as I select and click on, um, on these bars. And I then go to the attributes of these to then curtail these at, uh, I think, 9 metres. Should do the trick. So you can see here I've got some of those bars curtailed there. So if we now go back to, uh, just by clicking on OK, go back to our analysis, we can now see um, that it fairly closely follows. Again, I'm going to make some containments of the bottom bars, just the top row, and I'm going to uh, curtail those um, just by eyeing them in from the diagram before, and I'm going to curtail them to be somewhere in the region, say 2.5 meters. So we start at 2.5, and we end, I think, at 15 meters. And then we can see that uh, we've now got um, a curtailment of the bars which reflects the applied moments and forces. We now need to check and verify our shear, shear design. We can see here that it, the applied shear does exceed um, the allowable shear in some certain parts. Many things we can do, but one thing I'm going to do here is adjust um, the angle between the strut and the beam axis, the co compression strut. Um, from 21 uh, degrees to 30 and that seems to have uh, corrected the problem. Uh, one thing I do need to do is, um, is just check that the reinforcement, the longitudinal reinforcement requirements by changing that angle um, is not being exceeded so I move down to a table here check that the third column in the table 
um, is all greater than 1.0. If there was any values here less, less than 1, then I would need to ad add in some additional longitudinal reinforcement um, at various locations. So that's the design now complete, certainly for a preliminary design. And hopefully you will be able to see now that this iterative process um, can be very quick to home.